Cooper. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, we have a, 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 another witness binder we want to uh, hand up to the witness and to the court. Um, we're, th we're done with the big one. Uh, Professor Badgett, I want to turn now to uh, page 36 of your expert report and paragraph 110. I'm, I'm Sorry, I put this away. Okay, I'm sorry, which page? It's page 36 towards the end, paragraph 110. And, and in that paragraph, you, uh, you're um, speaking now to the uh, proposition that allowing same-sex couples to marry has had and will have no adverse impacts on heterosexual marriage. Uh, and in one, uh, paragraph 110, you say, based on my research and experience, I believe it is unlikely that heterosexual marriages would be discouraged or made unstable if same-sex couples were allowed to marry, or in the case of California, be permitted to continue marrying, but for Proposition 8. For example, data from the Netherlands, the first country to allow same-sex couples to marry, suggests, suggests that heterosexual marriage trends I'm, do not change. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was looking on the wrong page. I thought you said page 36. I did say 36. Um, it's your initial report. Um. Oh, okay, maybe I, yeah, okay. Maybe I do have the right, paragraph 110? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead and read that and catch up with me, <laughs> if you will. Yes, okay. And to conclude, uh, then the paragraph, for example, data from the Netherlands, the first country to allow same-sex couples to marry, suggests that heterosexual marriage trends do not change when same-sex couples are permitted to marry. <clears throat> uh, Professor Badgett, would you please open the binder that I've given you, the small one, to uh, tab number one. And, and what, what I have uh, behind tab number one is a demonstrative, Your Honor, as well as uh, Defense Exhibit 1887, which is a collection of statistics on the marriage rate in the Netherlands. And if, uh, with the Court's permission, I would publish the uh, demonstrative to the, uh, to the television screen. Um, now, Dr. Badgett, what this, what this demonstrative uh, at attempts to uh, display is the marriage rate, that is marriages per 1,000 inhabitants in the Netherlands, uh, over the course of time from 1994 to 2008. And what it reflects is a marriage rate that is uh, relatively stable from 5.4 uh, marriages per 1,000 inhabitants to 5.1 uh, uh, in 2001, that is from 1994 to 2001. And then from 2001, that is 5.1 marriages per 1,000 to 4.6 marriages per 1,000 in 2008. And if we turn to tab two, what, what I've submit to you, we've, we've calculated here, is the average yearly rate of change in the marriage rate for the Netherlands from 1994 to 2000, the year before same-sex marriage was 
<clears throat> was adopted in the Netherlands. And according to our uh, calculations, uh, the average yearly increase uh, during that period was 0.02%. Uh, every year, uh, the, the rate increased an average with variation, obviously, between years within the period, but overall increased 0.02%. And if you'll turn now to tab three, the next tab is the marriage rate and the average yearly rate of change in the Netherlands for the period uh, in which same-sex marriage was adopted and thereafter, 2001 to 2005. And you'll see that the average annual rate of change now declines. It declines to 0.07% uh, through the year that is the most recent year in which we have data, 2008. Uh, now that is a change between those two periods, the period uh, before same-sex marriage was adopted and the period uh, in which and after, the year in which and after same-sex marriage was adopted in the Netherlands, a, a rate of, of, of change uh, that is 450%, uh, a decrease Uh, that is 450% from the previous period. Uh, Dr. Badgett, uh, now, notwithstanding the accepted and understood difficulties of uh, and, and the various considerations and variables that go into uh, social phenomenon of this kind, like the marriage rate, it is, it is clear that at least from uh, the time that uh, the Netherlands uh, adopted same-sex marriage uh, until now, the marriage rate has declined significantly, correct? Objection. What ground? Uh, I beg your pardon? Isn't that a matter you can take up on cross or redirect? Uh, it, it is. It's such a long question. Well, it was a long question. Uh, <laughs> I'll be more sympathetic to that objection. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try to shorten it up, Your Honor. The uh, marriage rate in the Netherlands has declined significantly since uh, same-sex marriage was about just asking if it has, if the rate of marriage has declined. Thank, thank you for your, that friendly suggestion, Your Honor. I appreciate that. Has it, uh, Professor Badgett, declined significantly since same-sex marriage was adopted in Netherlands? In my opinion, it has not declined significantly from the rates that we would expect now. Okay, I want you to turn now uh, to tab four. And be behind tab four is a demonstrative dealing with the subject of unmarried couples with children in the Netherlands. And the, the, this is just the, essentially the raw data uh, for every year from 1994 to 2008. And at least according to my and our research, the only data available for, on, this, uh, on this statistic uh, is from 1994 to 2008. In other words, there's no data available prior to that. And what this, uh, what this demonstrative shows is that the numbers of unmarried couples with children have escalated steeply and consistently uh, over time from 1994 to 2008 um, from uh, 99,610 to 314,000 in, in, in 1994 to 314,566 in 2008. And the 
the, uh, the, the numbers have, uh, again, steeply increased. Is that accurate? Uh, this is just like the earlier slide that you showed, although <laughs> the 94 stopping, starting point makes a little more sense, I guess, if you can only find the data then. But yeah, we see that there was a trend of increasing, uh, the increasing numbers of unmarried couples with children. Although again, this is not, it's not clear this is the right, uh, the right measure that you would want to use. Um, but there was, a, there was a trend before and a trend after. I think if you took that red line out of there and showed it to everyone in this courtroom, nobody would be able to tell where same-sex couples got married. Well, let's, let's uh, turn to the next tab. And, and this computes the rate of uh, 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 unmarried couples with children as a percent of all families uh, in the Netherlands. And it, it indicates that uh, in 1994, 1.54 uh, uh, percent of all families were unmarried couples with children, but that uh, percentage has escalated to 2008 to 4.3 percent, uh, and uh, in 2001 the, the percentage was 2.84 percent. Uh, so the, the rate has, uh, as you would expect, uh, uh, given the increase in the numbers, but the rate, that is the uh, unmarried couples with children as a percent of all families and in the Netherlands has increased significantly over this period of time, correct? Well, I would use rate in an entirely different sense than you're using it here. Um, I, first of all, I, I don't, I have not ever calculated the statistic and, and I don't know if this is, uh, you know, appropriate, accurate or not. Um, but just looking at this graph, again, uh, the rate of change over the years is exactly the same. It's quite clear. It's a, pretty much a straight line. There was a trend of the increase before that is exactly equal to the trend of the of the increase afterwards. So there's no there's no break whatsoever to suggest that anything happened of importance in 2001. Well, let's let's look at the next tab um, because the yearly rate of change is calculated for the years 1994 through 2000 here, and that uh, annual rate of change. Uh, with respect to unmarried couples with children as a percentage of all families is uh, calculated at 0.18% yearly increase, year-on-year -year increase. Um, if you turn to, pe to, to tab 7, uh, the demonstrative behind tab 7, um, the average yearly rate of change is calculated for the years 2001 to 2008. And as you can see, that, that uh, rate of change is 0.21% uh, percent year on year. And so there has been an uptick, uh, again, uh, you know, assuming the uh, calculations, the math is correct, there has indeed been an uptick since 2001, an uptick that amounts to, yes, only 0.03% every year, but that, that is essentially a 17% increase in the, um, in the average uh, yearly uh, rate of change. Well, you haven't explained to me what this 0.021% yearly increase is. Is that the average increase from 2001 to 2002? And 2002 to 2003, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I mean, these kinds of differences are very sensitive to uh, the, the years that you happen to pick to start and, to, and end the, the calculation. So, you know, again, I, I can't comment on this without having looked more closely at the data. This uh, doesn't, uh, these rates seem odd to me, frankly. Um, I don't know, as I said, what, uh, I'd, I'd have to look at these. I'm seeing these, these particular angles on the data for the first time. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's turn now to tab 
8, the demonstrative behind tab 8. Uh, and what this uh, demonstrative uh, uh, displays are single parent families in the Netherlands, just the numbers, the total number of single parent families. And again, the number of single parent families since the time when the data uh, uh, began uh, in the Netherlands being kept from 1994 to 2008, uh, the uh, number of single parent families has very substantially increased. Isn't that correct? Again, I, I don't know. I'd have to look at this data and see if it's correct and um, think about it with regard to trends a uh, longer time period probably than, you, than you've got right here. Uh, oh, but it, 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 accepting the time period that I'm, I'm submitting to you, and I, I don't ask you to agree with it just to. Uh, to uh, uh, take it on its, uh, on its face, it, it is clear that uh, the number of single parent families has very substantially increased over the, the period of time from 1994 to 2008, correct? Again, as a, as a measure of what, I, I don't really know exactly what the, you know, what this is supposed to be showing. I mean, the number, the numbers that you've graphed here show an increase. And then, uh, the demonstrative behind tab number nine. This, uh, this demonstrative exhibit shows single parents as a percent of all families in the Netherlands. Uh, and the percentages uh, displayed here uh, uh, conform, do they not, to the rate, uh, or excuse me, to the numbers uh, in uh, very substantially in the course of time from 1994 to 2008. Again, it's you have to look at data in the larger context of other kinds of things that are changing and earlier trends. Uh, you know, I don't know. I haven't seen this data before. So. And uh, the demonstrative behind tab number uh, 10. Uh, this chart displays single parents as a percent of all families and the average yearly rate of change in the Netherlands for the period before same-sex marriage was adopted, that is from 1994 to 2000. And uh, it calculates a yearly increase in the rate of change is 0.032%. Oh, a, a, a modest uh, increase from 1994 to 2000 and compare that to the demonstrative e exhibit behind uh, tab number 11 which displays the single p single parents as a percent of all families and the average yearly rate of change in the Netherlands from uh, including 2001 to, uh, to 2008 and the yearly rate of change that is calculated here is 0.08% yearly increase, uh, which uh, computes to uh, an average annual uptick in the uh, percentage of single parents as a percentage of all families of over 150%. Do you see that? Yes, although it doesn't make any sense to me to go from something that looks like 5.6% in 1994 and 6.4% in 2008 and call that a 150% increase. That's the, the uh, <laughs> annual rate of change. Um, Dr. Badgett, um, I want you to, uh, if you will, please turn to uh, page six of your book. Uh, that is the book, When Gay People Get Married. I think it's behind tab eight of the large binder. Or you can certainly t turn to the actual book. It's page six. Are we done with the second uh, binder, Mr. Uh, Cooper? 
evidence the underlying statistical data from which these uh, demonstratives were uh, derived. Uh, it is uh, there, and, and perhaps I should just go through them now. I apologize the, for not. Yeah, eighteen eighty-seven. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Under yes. tab one of uh, the binder, that's DIX 1887. Yes, Your Honor. Voice, any objection? Well, DIX 1887 is admitted. And uh, DIX 2639. That's uh, that's uh, uh, that is related, Your Honor, to the demonstrative behind uh, chart number four, tab number four. Very well. With that representation, 2639 is also admitted. And um, an additional. Uh, Defense Exhibit uh, DIX 2426 is related to the data uh, associated with the demonstrative behind tab number five. All right, those are the underlying data. Um, and Your Honor, I've got, I think, just one or two more. No, actually, I think I think I think that may be it. Can I ask a question to the court? As I understand it, um, yes, yes, it is. Um, right, uh, Your Honor. Uh, the as as you can see from the heading of the demonstra of the uh, of the exhibit itself, size and composition, household position in the household, January one. So it's data as of January one uh, on uh, 1995 is the data that actually relates to year 1994. So they, they label, at least for this data, uh, that it is as of January 1 of a year, not December 31 of the previous year. You do a little more arithmetic. 56,057, 33,137, and 10,416 add up to 99,610. Is that it? Yeah. And, and do, do I understand that the data that's labeled on 2001 here is the data for January 1 of 2002? Um, no, it's it. I'm not sure I understand the question, but uh, the data for for January 2000, January 1, 2001, is the data that applies to the year 2000. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So I think the exhibits are, are in that pertain to this. Very well. Um, 
So, uh, Professor Badgett, uh, on, on page six of your book, the um, second full paragraph, it begins with the words, what path? Do you see that? Yes. Uh, and it reads, what path should what paths should change take in the United States, immediate or gradual? Do we need alternatives to marriage? Some observers want to see a more gradual expansion of rights for same-sex couples to see what the social impact will be. And now, do you agree with those observers? Uh, with respect to what? With respect to that statement, that a more gradual expansion of rights for same-sex couples uh, should should take place in order to be able to see what the social impact will be? Uh, I don't think it's necessary to wait any longer to see what the social impact would be. I think we know. Do you believe that that view is a reasonable one to hold? I have reached it through a reasoned process of looking at many different sources of data and different places. Um, and those, everything that I've looked at leads me to the conclusion that there is no impact. So you, you don't believe that is a reasonable view? Is that your testimony? I don't think it's necessary in order, uh, I don't think it's necessary for us to wait and have a more gradual expansion of rights. We've been going through that in the United States already, the gradual expansion of rights. Others farther right on the political spectrum, the, the par paragraph continues, see the big changes in the United States, especially in Vermont, Massachusetts, and California, as further examples of undemocratic judicial activism foisted on an unwilling public. Now, I don't suppose you uh, agree with that uh, comment, do you? No, as I discuss uh, in the book, I, I think that the pace of change has been quite measured. Uh, and, and finally, some in the gay community argue that change is happening too fast to avoid political backlash and that creating alternatives to marriage, both for same-sex couples and for other family forms, might be a better way to go. Uh, now, you obviously don't agree with that, right? No, I don't agree with that either. It's one that people offer and that we talk about, and my goal in the book was to take uh, each of these questions that I posed in this introduction and to, you know, look at them with, from the perspective of data and, and reason. But you think, uh, don't you, uh, Professor Badgett, that uh, social change with respect to same-sex marriage in this country is taking place at a sensible uh, pace at this time with more liberal a states taking the lead and providing examples that other states might someday follow. Isn't that correct? That's the conclusion that I draw from my look at the data on which states have made these changes, yes. Governor, one moment, please. Certainly. Further questions, Your Honor? Thank you, Dr. Badgett. Very well. Voice, re redirect. Good afternoon, Professor Badgett. Um, you were asked uh, earlier whether there were some difficulties in the categorization of gay and lesbians. Do you recall that? Yes. Um, are there difficulties in categorization of people based on race and religion as well? Um, I, I, like with sexual orientation, I wouldn't think of them as difficulties. I think that there are challenges, and that's why we see some changes from time to time in terms of how we measure those characteristics on surveys. Um, could we put back up the, um, the demonstrative that uh, went from 79,677 to 74,030? was the um, demonstrative that you used first. This is the uh, marriage rate for the Netherlands? Yes. Um, now, this 
this chart starts in uh, 1994. Um, uh, does this uh, accurately reflect the long-term trends as you believe they exist? No, and there's quite readily available data that goes back considerably farther. Um, let me ask you to look at um, your demonstrative exhibit 30. Yes. Um, uh, can you explain what this um, exhibit shows? This data is, uh, starts in the 1960s, um, and what we see is uh, a well-known um, change in the marriage rate in the Netherlands, which peaked in about 1970, and since then has been on a pretty steady decline with uh, you know, some variation from year to year. But overall, I think you can see quite clearly that there is uh, uh, a very clear uh, long-term trend of um, downward uh, of decreases in marriage rates over time. Uh, and there are some yearly variations, is that correct? Yes, there are. Uh, and for example, the um, marriage rate actually goes up from 2001 to 2002, correct? That's correct. And goes up again from 2007 to 2008, correct? Yes, that's right. Um, and if you look uh, on this chart uh, at 1994? Yes. Um, uh, that is the low point um, between uh, two, it's sort of the valley between two mountains, correct? Uh, it might be 1995. I, I can't quite tell from the data, but I think if the year is sort of in the middle, it might be 95. Either 1994 or 1995 is sort of the low point between two um, higher uh, areas, correct? Yes, yes. And um, uh, if they had um, picked a date either before 1994 or after 1994, the percentages would be quite different, correct? They could very well be quite different. Certainly if they look before 1994, they'd be quite different. Um, now, um, let me ask you to look again at your demonstrative number 32, which we uh, went over this morning. Uh, this, of course, is from the person, the professor that had been selected um, as a defendant's expert and then later withdrawn after this report was written, um, in which uh, Professor Allen says, in the Netherlands, the total number of heterosexual marriages has slowly fallen since the introduction of same-sex marriage. Like most Western countries, this is no doubt part of a larger secular trend. Do you see that? Yes, I do. And do you agree with that? I do agree with that. Um, uh, let me ask you to look at uh, defendant uh, D demonstrative exhibit 49. Uh, that, that was 49. Um, and this shows you going all the way back to 1965, the average annual different sex marriage rates in the Netherlands uh, on a five-year ba basis, correct? Yes. What does that show? Well, it gets rid of a lot of the year-to-year -year variation, which makes it a little quite easy to see that the long-term trend is very clear. It's the, the long-term trend is towards lower marriage rates in the Netherlands. And um, is the trend after 2001 uh, any different than the trend immediately preceding 2001? No, not after you take out the year-to-year -year variation in this way. Uh, now, uh, in your book that was, or in your, in, actually in your report that was quoted to you, you talked about various trends related to marriage, and do those include rates other than marriage rates? Yes, that's correct. Um, uh, for, for example, do they include divorce rates? Yes, I do. Um, uh, let me show you demonstrative exhibit 33. And um, uh, this represents divorce rates in the Netherlands 1996 to 2008, correct? Yes, that's correct. And what does it show happened to divorce rates after 2001? They decreased. 
Now, uh, you mentioned that um, there was a conversion process that was introduced in the Netherlands that you thought needed to be taken into account in looking at um, divorce rates, correct? That's right. Yes, that's an example of one of those confounding factors that we talked about before. And um, uh, let me show you demonstrative exhibit 55. And this is the combined divorce and conversion rates in the Netherlands, 1990 to 2008, correct? Yes, to the best of our abilities, the, the uh, Statistics Netherlands does not actually um, provide the precise conversion figure. Or the, I'm sorry, this is the conversion figures, but these aren't necessarily all dissolutions. I'm sorry, but that's right. These are conversions from marriages to registered partnerships in addition to divorces. That is, it includes all the conversions, but you don't know how many of those conversions actually re related to dissolutions. That's right. That's right. Some of them might not have resulted in dissolutions. So this would have um, uh, increased the number of divorces and conversions artificially to some extent and how much you don't know. Is that That's right? right. That's right. Yes. From marriage to domestic partnership or yes. exactly what it is? That's what it is. It, it is. It's a conversion from marriage to registered partnerships the, because they were creating a conversion. Pro My understanding is that they had to create a conversion process for people who are registered partners who could become married, and so they decided to allow that to go in both directions. And, and as you understood, it was uh, conversion to domestic partnership a way of getting a easy, simple divorce. Yes, that's that's the way it's been used. Although they've uh, they no longer allow a different sex, they no longer allow anyone to convert a marriage into a registered partnership. Um, now let me go back to the defendant's demonstrative that we had up before. We are testing our technical capabilities, shifting back and forth. The demonstrative I want is the one that showed both the marriage rate and the uh, domestic partnership rate. Demonstrative that did that before, yeah, be, before your binder. This shows uh, Netherlands opposite sex uh, relationships, which include both marriage and domestic partnerships, correct? Uh, that's what it appears to show, yes. Uh, now, it shows an increase in domestic partnerships from 2001 to 2008. I believe you indicated there was a confounding factor that related to that. Is that correct? Yes, yes. And, and um, would you uh, explain what that is now? Well, I, uh, there were two potential ones, I, I think, although I'm, I'm not positive because I had to look at this very quickly. I think they've taken out the, the conversion, so this would just be new registered partnerships. Uh, another th thing that happened in 2001 after the uh, uh, law that uh, allowed same-sex couples to marry was implemented was a second law that actually um, made registered partnerships much closer to marriage. Uh, they were already quite close in terms of their uh, legal rights and responsibilities. Um, they were virtually identical with a couple of exceptions. One of those exceptions was the relative ease of getting out of it. And the other was that there were no parental responsibilities uh, attached to 
uh, registered uh, to the registered partner of a woman who gave birth to a child. Um, but in 2001, um, uh, they changed that so that now uh, the the partners of of women who have the registered partners of women who have children. Um, are considered to have parental authority. They have uh, responsibilities towards the children who are born into those registered partnerships. Now, if you look at this uh, chart, and I ask you to look at 2001, from 2001 to 2002, the first year after um, same-sex marriages were allowed, in the Netherlands, both opposite-sex marriages and opposite sex domestic partnerships went up, correct? Yes, clearly, yes. Now, you indicated that uh, in your direct examination that while it was useful to look at the Netherlands and other foreign countries that permitted same sex marriages, the best evidence was to look at states in the United States where that had happened, correct? Yes, I think so. And um, uh, let me ask you to look at Demonstrative 41. Now this shows the marriage rates in Massachusetts for different sex couples and the marriage rates in the United States from 2000 to 2007, correct? Yes, that's right. And what does it show for the United States uh, in terms of the marriage rate uh, after 2004? A pretty steady decline. The, there was a slight increase from 2003 to 2004, but otherwise it's, it's uh, going down each year. Uh, and 2004 was when uh, Massachusetts in May 17th uh, permitted same-sex marriages for the first time, correct? Yes, that's correct. Now, uh, what, ha what does the chart show happened to the marriage rate in Massachusetts after 2004? Uh, this shows that the marriage rate actually increased. Uh, prior to uh, 2004, um, what had the marriage rate in Massachusetts been doing? Uh, well, since 2000, you can see that, again, with the uh, from 2001, it's been a pretty steady decline. And uh, the Massachusetts rates we're talking about are marriage rates just for different sex couples, correct? Uh, yes, that's what this slide shows. Uh, now, let me ask you to look at demonstrative 44. Um, and what does this demonstrative compare? This is looking at the uh, uh, change in the average annual divorce rate uh, before and after same-sex couples could marry in Massachusetts. And what does it show? Uh, it shows that the divorce rate's been declining in Massachusetts and in the United States, uh, but by a, a larger percentage change in that average before and after same-sex marriage became possible. Let me be sure I understand what you're saying. First, you're saying that after same-sex um, marriages were permitted in Massachusetts, the annual divorce rates declined, correct? Yes, yes, that's, that's right. Saying during that same period of time, annual uh, divorce rates declined in the United States as a whole, but not by as much, is that correct? That's right. I'd like to uh, direct your attention to Defendant's Exhibit 2647 which I think you have in one of the binders they gave you. Yes, I do. Um, now, tab nine of the big binder is at it. I think so, Your Honor. Yes, tab nine.
Now, Mr. Cooper uh, asked you to compare the 11 months. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I think I have the wrong one, too. The <laughs> 29. Uh, tab 9. Okay. Okay. Domestic Partnership Statistics, 2000 to 2009. Yes. Okay. Now, Mr. Cooper asked you to compare first 11 months of 2009 to 2000, first 11 months of 2008. Remember that? Yes, I do. And um, uh, he suggested that those two periods were completely comparable, um, despite the fact that um, same-sex marriage was allowed in 2008, but not in 2009, correct? Did. Now, in fact, same-sex marriage was only allowed for five or six months in 2008, correct? Yes. For and if you, if you take just the months the same-sex marriage was allowed in 2009 and compare those with the same five months in two, or five or six months in 2009, the difference is considerably greater, correct? It looks like it would be, yes. Yes, although, yeah, as I think I mentioned before, I think that, you know, it's, it's hard to draw any conclusions from a status that's been around for, for nine years at that point. Um, but that's right, when, when same-sex couples had no choice, we do see a higher, higher numbers. Um, now, he also asked you to um, uh, look at your report at paragraph 91. Can you put that in front of you? Yes. And he asked you a lot of questions about the calculation of exactly how many uh, thousands of California same-sex couples would marry if they were allowed to. Do you recall that? That's right. Now, for the point that you're making, does it make any difference whether the number of same-sex couples that are being deprived of the right to marry is 30,000 or 40,000 or 50,000? No, no. There's still enormous economic harm to those couples as well as to the state. Um, now let me go to your demonstrative exhibit 12. And um, what, what does this demonstrative show? Um, again, this is the, our estimate of the number of couples who got married in those six months um, and compares it to the number of couples registering domestic partnerships in that same, roughly that same time period. It shows approximately 18,000 same-sex couples chose marriage and about 2,000 same-sex couples during the same period of time chose domestic partnerships, correct? That's right. And what does that tell you about the preference of same-sex couples for marriage over domestic partnerships? Well, like, like some of the other comparisons we made, it, I think, shows that same-sex couples prefer marriage uh, by a wide margin over domestic partnerships. I ask you to look at demonstrative 13. What does this demonstrative show? Uh, this shows very clearly the same point. It shows that uh, marriage is uh, preferred to, for same-sex couples over either civil unions or domestic partnerships. And um, as I said, in the comparison with California, the, the early version of domestic partnership was uh, even less uh, popular among, among same-sex couples. Uh, now let me ask you to um, look at your report, paragraph 40. Mr. Cooper uh, read or asked you to read various portions of this paragraph 40. Do you recall that? Yes. Um, would you read uh, paragraph 41 for context? Okay. 
Uh, in other words, allowing same-sex couples to marry would result in a near-term increase of roughly 7,700 non-registered domestic partners residing in California who would benefit from the economic protections afforded by marriage, or 9% of the same-sex couples living in California. Um, now would you turn to paragraph 37 of your report. <coughs> and uh, Mr. Cooper read and asked you to read various uh, portions of paragraph 37. Uh, for context, would you read paragraph 38? Whereas getting married sends a message that is recognized by almost all individuals in a culture, the same-sex couple suggested in interviews that an alternative status is often understood to have a different and inferior meaning than marriage. Several couples saw registered partnership as lacking the deep emotional meaning of marriage, and they tended to see registered partnership as dry and businesslike. In contrast to registered partnership, a new status that was created in 1998, part of the value of marriage is the clearly recognized signal that it sends. According to one former Californian who was living in the Netherlands with her partner, a Dutch citizen, quote, one of the amazing things about people, uh, about marriage, is people understand it, you know. Two-year-olds understand it. It's a social context and everyone knows what it means, end quote. Her partner noted that marriage, quote, had a substance that registered partnerships lacked. The ability to show, as she put it, quote, this is the woman that I've chosen to be with, excuse me, for the rest of my life, end quote. And what's the significance of that in your analysis? In my opinion, it shows that individuals clearly uh, not only see marriage as something that's uh, more valuable that comes with added uh, characteristics over some alternative status, but the alternative status in and of itself is devalued because it's seen as sending a message of inferiority. Um, let me ask you uh, now to look at the small binder that was given you, demonstratives, and I'm going to the demonstrative that is at tab four. Maybe we can put that up on the screen. Mr. Cooper um, asked you some questions about this, and um, and there's a a portion of this chart that says there's a 215.8% increase. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Um, and this purports to show the unmarried couples with children in the Netherlands. Uh, now, when was um, uh, same-sex uh, marriage authorized in the Netherlands? As of uh, April 2001. Um, now, um, uh, since it takes about nine months at least to produce a baby, even if you start immediately. Um, can we agree that it is unlikely that there were un any uh, children born to unmarried couples as a result of the passage of gay marriage uh, prior to 2002? Uh, that sounds quite plausible to me. Um, now, um, I apologize for doing this, but we, we didn't have these charts before, and I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of arithmetic with me. While okay. Um, if you look at the change, the increase in unmarried couples with children from 1999 uh, to 2001, that, yes, I do, and um, that's a that's an increase of um, roughly thirty four and a half thirty four thirty five thousand, correct? Uh, yes, that's about right, roughly. Um, now, in the period after two thousand two, yes, um, is there any uh, comparable period that had a comparable increase. I don't see any that come close to that now. For example, from 2002 uh, to 2004, um, uh, the increase was about 32,000. Is that correct? 
2002 to 2004, over a two-year period. Oh, I'm sorry. I was only looking at one-year periods. Uh, yeah, so that's a smaller increase, I believe. Yeah. And, um, and each of the subsequent years actually are smaller than that, uh, correct? It looks like it. They come very close. This is about as close to a straight line as you'll ever see in a demographic measure. So does this tell you uh, anything at all about um, uh, the effect of allowing gay marriage on encouraging people to have uh, unmarried, unmarried couples to have children? Um, it, it certainly provides no evidence whatsoever for it, in my opinion. Um, now, if you look at the next demonstrative, one behind tab five, this shows the unmarried couples with children as a percent of all families. Yes. See that? And from uh, 2000 to 2001, uh, the percentage increased by 0.24 percent, correct? Uh, yes. And um, from 2001 to 2002, it was 0.22 percent, correct? Right. Now, after 2002, is there any year where it increases by that magnitude? That is, by 2000. 0.22 or 0 0.24? 0.22 or 0.24. Uh, somewhere in between from 03 to 04, it looks like. And I believe in the other years, it's, it's less than that. Now, do you draw from this um, the conclusion that allowing same-sex marriage uh, reduced the number of unmarried couples with children as percent of all families? Uh, that it reduced it? No, I wouldn't conclude that at all either. Um, I, what can you, if anything, conclude from this? I think you could conclude that the trend that existed before 2001 continued after 2001 with virtually no departure from that trend. No departure that I can detect of, of any meaningful size. Any of the um, questions that Mr. Cooper asked you uh, go at all to the issue of whether gay and lesbian couples are substantially hurt by not being able to marry? Um, in, in terms of these figures here or in terms of the entire discussion? Entire, the entire examination. Is there, anyth is, there anything, is there anything that he covered or showed you during the entire examination, not just looking at these charts, that in any way uh, is inconsistent with your conclusion that gay and lesbian couples are substantially hurt by not being able to marry? No, no, I have not changed my opinion based on our discussion. Um, was there anything that he showed you or um, discussed with you during any part of the examination that in any way uh, was inconsistent with your conclusion that gay and lesbian couples' children, that is, children being raised by gay and lesbian couples, are hurt by their parents not being allowed to marry? No, I don't, I don't think we even discussed that at all. So no, my opinion has not changed. I still think they would be hurt by their parents not being allowed to marry. Is there anything that you saw or heard at all during Mr. Cooper's examination that in any way is inconsistent with your conclusion that gay and lesbian uh, couples' right to marry would not cause any harm to heterosexual couples or to the institution of marriage? No, I still have seen no evidence uh, that suggests that there would be any harm or any change uh, to the institution of marriage. Uh, Your Honor, I have no more questions. Very well. Then. Thank you, uh, Professor, for your testimony. You may step down. And regrettably, Council, we're going to have to adjourn today. I have a judge's meeting that I need to preside at and disappoint my colleagues. So we'll resume tomorrow morning at 8.30.
And uh, let's see, our next witness is going to be? Uh, our, our, ne our next wit witness will uh, be Mr. Uh, Ryan Kendall, uh, but we will also be playing uh, excerpts from the deposition of a couple of witnesses. All right, fine. Anything to take up? I'll see you tomorrow.